Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So early September generally marks the time of year when Apple releases something really cool every year. And this year it's the A17 CPU, a new version of Apple Silicon and the Apple iPhone 15, which uses that new Apple Silicon. So what does this mean for AI? What does it mean for Apple? Let's get into it. So we figured the iPhone 15 Pro would feature some sort of new A17 chip since the previous chip, the A16, came out almost a full year ago. But Apple surprised us by debuting its first Pro chip at the event today. So the A17 Pro is Apple's most powerful mobile silicon yet. This three nanometer chip uses 17 billion transistors and a six core CPU. Apple claims its two performance cores are 10% faster than the A16, while its four efficiency cores offer far better performance per watt, so they're just more efficient. The six core GPU is also 20% faster than before, and it features advanced graphics features like hardware accelerated ray tracing. And aside from the A17 Pro looking really useful to game developers and developers in general, the AI implications are absolutely massive. So another huge thing Apple touched on in their event was the advent of capturing 3D video and 3D spaces natively with Apple software and Apple Silicon. And basically we can assume that NERFs are probably part of this. And NERFs have been one of the biggest sort of next generation technologies that, that has come out of this huge push for AI in the last year. Representing a whole new way to capture spaces, represent 3D objects, and use them in spaces like gaming and VR. However, if we look a little bit further into the AI specific elements of this new Apple Silicon, there's way more to unpack. So what's important to understand here is that the neural engine that does things like uh, ReLU acceleration and focuses on just accelerating portions of metal that focus on ML operation. The neural engine is separate from the GPU itself. So even though the, uh, the six core GPU is 20% faster, the neural engine is also twice as fast. And although you might be just thinking, oh, it's only twice as fast, increases like this do not happen without an absurd amount of engineering and time going into them. For me, the most underrated fact of this entire presentation, everything aside, is that now the iPhone 15 Pro using the A17 Pro Apple Silicon carries a uh, just incredible uh, 35 teraflops of ML compute capability. And you might think, oh, well, like what's 35 teraflops? You know, what does that even mean? And basically uh, a teraflop or a flop is a rough measure of computational capability. And what's really wild is when you start comparing this to equivalent NVIDIA GPUs. And since you can run PyTorch on Apple Silicon and since a lot of the Python tooling for things like LLMs and a lot of AI tools we use locally now carries over. Um, GGML and some of the projects we've covered in the past are a striking example of this. 35 teraflops roughly equates to a 3070 or a 3070 Ti. So what's crazy is uh, just a few years down the road from when the 3070 was a brand new flagship GPU, you can now carry one of those in your pocket that runs on a battery that has 14 hours of battery life which I think is incredibly cool and just shows how far we've come and how far ahead Apple is with Apple Silicon, especially when it comes to AI things. Now you might think, okay, like what does AI on Apple devices really even do? And it does way more than you might think. Um, for the last five to seven years, um, AI has been an integral part of just making cameras on smartphones work. If you looked at the information coming out of a raw, unprocessed smartphone uh, image sensor, it would really just look like an unsaturated potato took the picture. And at least in going forward, you know, Apple has a ton of AI features. They have the ability to auto collate and sort your photos, to find faces in photos, autofocus based on AI. They're actually built in tools for classifying plants from your photos, which is kind of interesting. And Apple has a whole host of other features like Siri running entirely locally now. There are also inference features with some of the uh, other imaging tools. And apps you can build on the iPhone can also leverage these coprocessors to do all kinds of things. And what's also cool is the A17 has also been applied to the Apple Watch. So now you can actually have Siri natively on the Apple Watch, not having to talk to your phone and it expands the capabilities wildly to a number of Apple Edge devices. And I don't think it'll be long until we see some sort of LLM uh, quantized and actually deployed on an Apple smartwatch, which would be incredibly cool. So I know some of you are probably mostly excited about uh, the new iPhone having USB-C, or maybe the camera being slightly better, or the entire phone being one gram lighter. But we wanted to make a quick video just to talk about how cool this is and how likely the GGML project will continue to push the state of the art forward. Obviously AI at Apple is a massively important thing. 
and hopefully soon we'll start to see um, the real muscle of this A17 Pro processor. Once we realize what Apple's been doing, supposedly spending millions of dollars a day on training some kind of LLM that will likely be deployed to all Apple devices. So we hope you learned something. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing and we'll see you in the next video.